Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I'm going to do a user request video. Someone asked me about seeing my Longicata or Longtail Boas and I thought I'd get some of these beauties out and show you guys since uh, these are some of my favorite types of boas or type of boas. These animals are called Longtail or Longicata or Tombs Boas and they're basically a subspecies of Boa Imperator, Boa Imperator Longicata, which means long tail. And uh, great species are great type of boa to work with. They actually have a cult following. A lot of people really like them and seem to want to work with nothing else. Although I think they're not really all that well known to just you know the general boa keeping public. And uh, great animal. They're you know really handleable, really easy to keep. Kind of a nice medium size. This is a I believe she's a 2015 born female from the Bisset bloodline. She's about six feet or so. She had one litter previously back in 2021 and hopefully this year she'll have another litter. I got my adults actually paired up right now. I just grabbed her real quick. The uh, male wasn't at it so just grabbed her for a minute just to show you guys but she's gonna go back into the breeding trials. But one of the most Notable characteristics of these long tail boas, besides the long tail, is the dark color. And they undergo this amazing metamorphosis. They start out really light in color, and then with each shed, they get gradually darker until when they reach sexual maturity at four or five years old, they have this really dark color. And you can see the beautiful dark black pattern and a lot of like caramel and you know, beautiful brown highlights, a lot of speckling on the bellies. And really, really cool head markings. Hopefully you can see those beautiful blotches on her head, both on the top of the head and the sides of the head. But just a great animal to, animal to work with. Um, they tend to be pretty docile. You know, I've never had one act defensively towards me. They're very food aggressive, so they'll go for the food, but they don't normally, I've never seen any try to bite me. Um, and just a great animal to work with. Um, fingers crossed on, on at least one litter this year, but I don't know yet. Breeding trials are still going on. And I'm going to put her back in the, uh, with her mate, and hopefully they'll get back to business. And I'll show you some of my younger Alangicata so you can see how they look when they're not full grown. They're not you know, quite as dark in color. Next, this is a 2021 holdback female. This is a, an offspring from the female I just showed you from her first litter. And this one's doing really well. You can see she's kind of midway with through her transformation as far as the color. She's definitely getting darker, but she's not as dark as her mom quite yet. It'll take her probably another couple of years to get like that. Um, but just over the last couple of years, she's just gradually developed more melanin pigment with every shed and eventually she'll be dark like her mother. So as I mentioned, these are called long-tailed boas or also known as tombs boas, T-U-M-B-E-S, after the region of Peru where they were found. It's actually a city right in northern Peru on the border with Ecuador, and that's where these animals come from. So because they are from um, kind of north and west of the Andes Mountains, they're classified as boa imperator, a constrictor of course occurs east and south of the Andes Mountains and these animals um, just a great species to work with I've never had any issues with husbandry with them they've always eaten really well uh, they've always you know grown real well and very calm you know they don't freak out or try to escape when you handle them and just a great species to look into if you're looking for something a little bit different. You can see the belly of this female still pretty white. She hasn't uh, really developed much coloration to that yet, which she will with time. But it's really noteworthy because as babies they look completely different. And uh, I'll grab one more 2021 and then show you an even younger one. This is a holdback male from the 2021 Bisset bloodline litter. You can see he looks pretty similar to his sister. This guy is a little bit darker. He's kind of got a little bit wider saddles and they've developed you know, a lot of the dark pigment. Just a really cool looking animal. This, these 20, 21 holdbacks, which are about two and a half years, these guys are about uh, probably three, three and a half feet. You know, not huge boa, not a dwarf. Kind of a good size 
for most people to work with. You know, they're not going to get giant, but they're also pretty impressive if you want kind of a medium to large size snake. And you can see the dark head markings on this guy. These guys as babies, there's quite a bit of variation in the patterns. And they all basically get darker with age. Um, you know, some get darker than others. They've got bigger, wider saddles. They're going to get darker. And, you know, I, I don't want to get out my other adults now since they're in breeding trials. But uh, I've seen pictures of these online, and there is quite a bit of variability in the adults. I've seen some really beautiful ones that don't have all that much dark pigment. They retain a lot of the beautiful golden caramel brown pigment. But then I've seen other ones which are very, very dark, and they're almost like a melanistic boa, like an IMG boa or something. But you never know, and it's cool because you get quite a bit of variability in the offspring, and they're all probably turn out looking a little bit different. So it's a lot of uh, variability for breeders to work with. Next, a couple holdbacks from a litter I had in 2022, which is from my other adult pair, which is from Vin Russo's bloodline. And overall, they're pretty similar looking. I probably couldn't uh, differentiate them if you know I didn't know which was which. But uh, maybe a little bit different looking. Maybe, I think these Russo bloodline ones, maybe a little bit cleaner overall, less black flecking. Um, but maybe that's just the animals that I have. And so this is a male that I held back. And I kind of picked him for as a holdback because he had this stripe towards his tail. This guy's actually going into shed right now. But this guy is probably about two and a half feet long. So, you know, they grow slowly but steadily until they get to be about uh, probably five to seven feet as adults. One thing to note is that one of the characteristics of these obviously is their dark color, but then there's also anerythristic forms, um, you know, which lack the red and yellow pigments. You can see this one has some underlying yellowish pigment that contributes to the brown. And when they become adults, it's kind of more masked and they overall look just really dark. Um, the pair that I have from the Vin Russo bloodline supposedly is hat for anerythristic. I had a, a decent sized litter. I think it was, you know, 17 or so babies in 2022. To me, none of them really looked anerythristic. So, you know, it's possible that my animals aren't hat for anerythristic, or it's possible some of them were just kind of on the borderline. When you have a really dark bow, it can be kind of hard to tell anyway if some of them were anerythristic. Um, so I don't know, maybe some of you guys who got these animals, maybe you think you're just anerythristic. There should be a one in four chance of them being anerythristic. Although none of them really look anerythristic to me. I've seen some pictures online. Sometimes it definitely looks anerythristic. These animals have a really silvery appearance. They almost look like a black and white photograph. But then I've seen a lot of people claiming that their longicata are anerythristic, and they're clearly not anerythristic. They're just well, dark longicata like this one that have kind of the more yellowish background. Uh, incidentally, Vin Russo also has this uh, yellow bloodline, he calls it, where the animals have more yellow color. So um, just, you know, when you're buying an animal that is described as anerythristic, you might want to ask some questions. No, not that it really matters. These animals are great whether they're anerythristic or not, but if you're paying extra money for a real anerythristic, you want to make sure you're getting what you're paying for. Finally, one more animal. This is a 2022 holdback female. You can see overall she's not as dark as the male. She probably won't get quite as dark. I kind of like this look where they have this beautiful, rich, caramel, yellowish brown color. And I've even seen some adults that look kind of like this but most of them do get darker. You can see this female is getting her dark head markings there. And she's still kind of got the whitish belly with a little bit of flecking. But just great animals. They're really tolerant of handling, as you can see. And uh, they don't try to escape. The personality is kind of similar to like a Colombian bow imperator, which they're probably pretty closely related to if you look at the range map of where these live compared to the Colombian. Poa and Paratours, and they're about the same size as well. So great animal to work with. Um, yeah, the Longicata, I don't have anything negative to say about these guys. They're deserving of their cult status in the Boa hobby.
and hopefully if you haven't seen these guys before you'll kind of give them a second thought if you're looking for something a little bit different that's really rewarding to work with and as i mentioned hopefully i'll have some of these babies you know available later this summer i didn't have any in 2023 unfortunately but hopefully this year we'll get some nice logicatas anyway i hope you enjoyed this video as always shoot me any questions or comments you might have thanks for watching and enjoy your boss